Hi everyone, my name is Sonali. I am a sustainability consultant based out of Delhi, India. I am a lead AP in building design and construction. And today we will be discussing the overview of USDBC and LEED. So this video is part of our social initiative where we aim to train people uh, in this where who are preparing for the LEED GA exam and want to make a difference. Please do like, share and subscribe or leave a comment of what you think about it. Uh, and let's get going. So uh, to give you an overview of USGBC and LEED, uh, USGBC here stands uh, for US Green Building Council and LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. So USGBC was formed in 1993 to promote sustainability within the built environment. Uh, the mission statement is to transform the way buildings and communities are designed built, operated, enabling an environmentally and socially responsible, healthy and prosperous environment that improves the quality of life. So USGBC manages various streams, which includes lead products, community, imparting education, advocacy for green building laws, and nurturing startups at grassroots level. Okay, so the lead rating system which we are going to discuss is developed by USGBC, but uh, it is administered by a third party organization, which basically provides an independent oversight of lead projects, uh, which is GBCI and it, uh, it basically stands for Green Business Certification Incorporated. Then community, uh, so USGBC offers different ways to get involved in local and international uh, communities of professionals such as volunteering and uh, this is basically uh, you can contact the local chapters local usgbc chapters and get in touch for volunteering or you know just for community interaction as well so uh, you can find more information on this on their website education so uh, usgbc manages multiple channels of education for green building professionals so people seeking credentials can find information on various credentials certification on their website, part of which is the LEED GA exam. So when you are continuing your LEED GA or you're doing a renewal of your, ex of your credential, then you'll have to maintain those through these educational hours uh, on a regular basis. So that's, that's part of their uh, uh, mainstreams. Uh, advocacy. So a crucial part of advancing green building in the marketplace is uh, encouraging advocacy. So local and national advocacy committees have been established related to policy priorities, code adoption, green schools, and uh, other green campaigns. Uh, grassroots work. Uh, grassroots efforts start at home and promote change from the bottom up, uh, supporting and organizing uh, grassroots initiatives are as important as advancing advocacy. So USGBC hosts many local and national initiatives such as Green Build, which is an yearly event that happens uh, to, to build the community, to bring the community together and uh, brainstorm and discuss the, the initiatives happening within the local regions. Okay, let's talk about LEAD and how it started. So LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, uh, just in case you have not memorized by now. Uh, so LEED essentially provides a framework for healthy, efficient carbon and cost saving buildings. It is one of the most prominent uh, globally recognized symbol of sustainability achievement and leadership uh, for buildings. So USGBC basically re released its first version in uh, 2000s. And uh, after that, uh, they have received more version that came uh, in coming years based on the industry feedbacks and recommendations. And the most recent version that uh, is most widely used is V4, which was released in 2013. But there's also a recent version which is called V4.1, which has the latest addendums to V4, which is also being covered in new projects that we are that are coming up. Okay, so LEED has. Uh, five reference guides corresponding to each set of rating system. So within LEED, we have different rating systems, uh, which are which also uh, correspond to a different uh, 
credential, speciality credential. So lead AP VD plus C would mean uh, building design and construction. Lead AP homes would be for residential or uh, houses, housing societies. Lead AP would be for ND, which is neighborhood development. Lead AP ID plus C would be for interior design and construction projects. Lead AP ONM would be for operation and maintenance of existing buildings. So that's that's the overview of the five reference guides. Okay. So the building buildings following lead frameworks or that are lead certified, they tend to save money in daily operation and maintenance costs, have better efficiency as compared to other buildings, and hence have lower carbon emissions and produce a healthier space for its occupants. Uh, while all the LEED certified buildings achieve such goals, there are different tiers in rating. So the lowest one being LEED certified, in which building has to score above 40 points, and the highest being platinum, in which the building has to score more than 80 points. These are uh, from a total score of 110. So higher rating means higher performance of the building. For a project to be certified by LEED, it requires a minimum of 40 points. For silver, 50 points. For gold, it's 60 points, and for platinum, more than 80 points. Uh, this is an example of a LEED certified building. This is a Apple Park main building, which is certified LEED platinum with 87 points under the LEED new construction category. You can read more about it on their website. This is how a scorecard looks like. So this has different categories under which we have different credits and each credit has uh, certain points associated to them and the points that they have achieved out of the total is being written here. And then you have the total which is 87 out of 110. Uh, USGBC has a membership program for organizations with best representations from the green building industry. So these organizations could be big, small, local, international, just with an intent and market drive to make an impact and advance green building for a more sustainable environment. They have four level of membership, uh, which are organizational, silver, gold, and platinum in order of the maximum benefits. So in general, these membership uh, have some common benefits, which uh, are written here, which is connect. Becoming so connecting with other organizations which have the same intent or the same cause, uh, basically uh, it it makes you stand out. It makes you uh, it helps you to become an important member of the green building community and getting ahead. So get ahead by gaining access to USGBC's flexible learning platform and stay up to date. So whoever has these membership has uh, access to this learning platform or the education side of it. So if you're part of the organization which has a membership, then you also get those benefits as well. Uh, exclusive member events. Uh, this is an invitation to any exclusive member events that are happening uh, within USGBC or within any other party that is uh, that has the same cause. Uh, volunteer opportunities. So these opportunities are for local advocacy groups or uh, sitting on the lead steering committee, helping shape the future of lead. Uh, discounts. So discounts uh, here include your registration and certification discounts for a project or for credential discounts or for any other events that are happening uh, or within USGBC. So this includes your lead AP or lead GA exams as well. If you're applying for that and you have an organizational membership, then you get discounts on your certification fee. Industry offers. So this is an exclusive access to a growing list of industry offers or industry specific offers in the regions. So as per lead version four, the primary aim of the rating system is to, uh, is to impact, to have an impact on these categories. So while we have different categories and different credits, but the intent is to have an impact uh, through these categories, which are uh, reverse contribution to climate change, enhance human health and well-being, protect and restore water resources, protect biodiversity and ecosystem services, promote sustainable and regenerative resource cycles, build a greener economy, enhance community, social equity, environmental justice, and quality of life. If you're more interested to, uh, to know how 
uh, it divides points in the each category then i would recommend to go check out their website which talks about lead impact categories there's a document uh, especially de defining or describing each one of them so now we are delving into the lead categories which we just saw on the scorecard so each category will have different credits and if different credits will have certain points associated to it so the first category is location and transport uh, it has been added or introduced in version 4 of lead so the lt category focuses on ideas to reduce your cost pollution and depletion of resources related to your transportation this transportation uh, is about the daily transportation which is happening to and from a building so that's that's the scope of this transportation that we are talking about the next category is sustainable sites which rewards decisions about the environmental surrounding the building with credits that emphasize the vital relationships among buildings ecosystems and ecosystem services uh, it focuses on restoring project site elements integrating the site with local and regional ecosystem and preserving the biodiversity that natural systems rely on so the project teams that comply with the prerequisite and credits in ss category they protect uh, sensitive ecosystems by completing an early site assessment or by avoiding to build uh, by avoiding to build on uh, any uh, existing vegetation or avoiding to harm any habitat or open space or water bodies within the site or, or, or its surrounding areas so for example the project are eligible to gain points for simply preserving the existing vegetation on site uh, now we have water efficiency which as the name suggests is based on an efficiency first approach to water conservation the conservation and creative reuse of water are important because uh, 3% of uh, earth's water is fresh water and of that slightly two thirds is trapped in glaciers so uh, typically most of the buildings water cycles water cycles through the building and then flows off site as a wastewater so designers and builders can construct green buildings that can use significantly less water than conventional construction by incorporating native landscapes which eliminate the need of irrigation at all or installing water efficient fixtures which reduce your indoor water use and or, or reusing wastewater for non potable water reuse Uh, next category is energy and atmosphere category this category approaches energy from a holistic perspective addressing energy use reduction energy efficient design strategies and renewable energy sources so energy efficiency in a green building starts with a focus on design that reduces overall energy needs such as building orientation glazing selection and the choice of climate appropriate building materials that we have uh strategies such as passive cooling or passive heating natural ventilation and high efficiency hvac systems partnered with smart controls further reduce a building's energy use the ea category recognizes the reduction of fossil fuels extends far beyond the walls of building this category actually has the maximum number of points the material and resources credit category so this category focuses on minimizing the embodied energy or embodied carbon and other impacts associated with the extraction processing transport maintenance and disposal of building materials you might ask what embodied carbon is short answer is it's the carbon emissions associated with materials and construction processes throughout the whole life cycle of a building or material or infrastructure embodied carbon therefore includes material extraction transport to manufacturer manufacturing transport to site and construction so you can find more on that in our other videos which talks specifically talks about life cycle analysis the requirements in this category are basically designed to support a life cycle approach that improves performance and promotes social efficiency each requirement identifies a specific action that fits into a larger context of a life cycle approach to embodied impact reduction the uh, next category is indoor environmental quality this category rewards decisions made by project team about indoor quality indoor air quality thermal and visual and acoustic comfort so green buildings with good environmental quality protect the health and comfort of the building occupants 
this category focuses on the occupant health as the main intent or the main goal of the category so high quality indoor environments also enhance productivity decrease absenteeism improve the building's value and reduce the liability for building designers and owners this section balances the need for prescriptive measures with more performance oriented credit requirements so think of it as measures which will enhance occupant comfort in thermal visual or acoustic form for example ventilation and thermal controls requirements for uh, lighting quality and daylight matrix all of this will contribute to an enhanced occupant comfort Uh, the last category is innovation and uh, regional priority these two are different categories but we can club them for uh, for just the sake of understanding so these two are uh, bonus points uh, in terms of in addition to the six categories that we have innovation uh, is basically uh, to promote the projects to go for any innovative strategies which are not currently covered in the lead categories that we just discussed so uh, because you know sustainable design strategies and measures are constantly evolving evolving and improving so the purpose of this category is to recognize project for innovative building features and sustainable practices and strategies which are not uh, included as part of the lead rating system yeah so this also includes maybe having a lead ap in the project that also contributes to a point in this category uh, next one is the regional priority so usgbc has basically established a process that identifies at least uh, six regional priority credits for every location so the goal of this credit is to enhance the ability of a project team to address the critical environmental issues across their region so uh, those credits that are important to a specific region will uh, if if the project attempts those credits or attempts to a certain level of it then the projects are awarded extra points or bonus points for attempting those credits because those uh, those credits are important to the region or are important important environmental factors or environmental issues for the region so i think the maximum point here is 4 uh, for the regional priority credits so yeah that's pretty much uh, thank you so much for joining us in this video if you have any questions and thoughts we would love to hear from you please don't hesitate to leave a comment below your support is incredibly valuable to us if you enjoy our content and want to see more uh, we kindly uh, ask you to hit subscribe and like buttons by doing so you are helping us grow and continue providing free informative content on sustainability which is the need of the hour together we can make a difference thank you so much